Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. Coming in with this week's Love and Marriage Huntsville. I'm sorry we didn't come in on y'all last week. Last weekend was my husband's birthday. Hey. And I took him away for the weekend. If you have not checked out that vlog, make sure you check it out. It's going to be linked below. And also subscribe to our lifestyle channel, Life With Us TV. Let's go ahead and get into it. This week's episode is my party and I'll make you cry or something. And yeah. you'll cry if I make you. <laughs> Listen, the only thing that I have to say about this week's episode is I feel like every adult on this show has an opportunity to grow the buck up. Except for Maurice and Kimmy. They seem to really have their skit together. But while we're talking about them, let's go ahead and hit Kimmy and Maurice. Yeah. See, we was kind of looking at Maurice like, okay, you want Quim um, Kimmy to quit her good job that she enjoys. So it's not like she has a career that she hates. She loves being a nurse, right? But listening to this week's episode, and then it kind of did help me because I looked at the interview that Funky Dineva did with Letitia and Kimmy, kind of brought a lot into perspective. It's not that Maurice wants Kimmy to quit nursing to go into real estate just because he wants her to be an entrepreneur and to take ownership of to take complete ownership of her future it's because there is some hemming and hawing <laughs> yeah going on at the house exactly. after the shift and being married to a fixer yep i definitely understand yeah how that translates when you say something to your husband that love you so much that all they hear is, my wife is dealing with something that is egging her. Fix it. I need to fix it. Figure yep. out a way to get her out of that situation to make her happy so that she can flourish the way that she's intended to flourish. Because if she is being frustrated, she's not going to be able to do that. And we know that we are the head and the heart of, well, we're the head and y'all yeah. are the heart of the household. So if y'all are not functioning right, the household suffers. There, this this dark cloud just comes over, and so we need to fix that dark cloud as soon but as possible. There is also a difference in just airing out your grievances because you just have to get it up off of you, than to really be miserable in your career. There is a difference. Like there are days I come home from work and it's like. La, 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 la. I don't want to quit. I just had a day where I just got to give, get it off. But then there is days. Like yeah. after I came back from surgery, Stanley was like, I don't even know why you went back. I told you not to go back. Yep. So pretty much don't say skip to me because yep. I told you not to go back. And I'm like, this this really ain't the time. We in the middle of a pandemic. We but, don't know what but, the future is going to hold right now. So let me work and keep banking and do what I need to do. Uh-huh. I hear you. Oh. It, it's, <laughs> It's, it's two sides to it. It's a difference than y'all coming in and complaining about what's happening at the job. Because we understand booze get happens at all about job. It's no such thing as a perfect job. I understand that. But when it goes beyond just you complaining to me every now and then to it showing up in our everyday life, that's when we be like, leave that motherfucking job. But that's what Maurice is be. saying. It That's has to what be Maurice a calculated saying. risk. It has to be. Well, we're not talking about us right now. We're talking about Maurice. But no, no, no. It's, I'm segwaying it into them as well. Because like Kimmy said, and she said this on the interview, so the interview was in real time. What she was saying was, yes, I am willing to deal with the grievances of my job because I have a goal set. And her goal was to make sure that her son gets out of college without any debt. And she was like, that is a hefty check to take on every month. So if I quit my job, then this becomes a household burden. And I don't want that for my household, but I get what Maurice is saying. This is community debt here. You know what I mean? If that is something that has to be done, we can take we care are of going to take care of no. it. He said we can take care of that today. Yeah, I get it. I yeah. get it. But you have to understand what kind of person Kimmy is as well. Oh, yeah, I know. Kimmy is know. very independent. Yes. And if I know her like I think I know her, there's always a fail, a, a safe 
in the back of her mind, like, mm mm, you yeah. ain't never gonna bring this kid up because I exactly. put my own son through that's, college and I got <laughs> that's free. what I was going through next is that she would rather suffer as an independent woman than put her pride in her pocket and allow her good husband, the king, to step in and take that grievance away from her. So she'd rather suffer through that. And she told myself, hey, it's only for six more months. Then when the six months get here, it's going to be another excuse. Yeah, because she, she put in a resignation and her boss was like, I'm not going to accept it. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's interesting. But she promised that she would give him six more months. But shout out to Kimmy. Because let yeah. me tell you, your son is in one of the best positions in life right now. Like he gets to start life at on an even playing field. Right. With everyone else. Well, unless he was inheriting land and all that stuff. We're not talking about that. Yeah. But unfortunately, a lot of us start out in life with thousands and thousands of dollars in student loan debt. Mm -hmm. I had it. I tell you, when we first got married, man, those bills were something else. And we pulled ourselves from up under that. I yeah, think our first did. four to five years of marriage, we like yeah, hit, knocked that out. hit, uh -huh. hit until we didn't have any more student loan debt. Yeah. But I get it. So, Kimmy, shout out to you and Jalen, boy. Yeah. Make sure that you make the best of this clean yeah. slate. Don't please, make no bro, mistakes. Please don't get out of school and go and rack up a whole bunch of debt, mm -hmm. man. No. So not only are you going to you, disappoint your parents, but you're going to disappoint us, man. Because, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had, yeah, we had to do that. I ain't have no student loan debt, but I have some credit card debt that, you know, that I had to pay off from, from You had student young. debt loan debt later in life. <laughs> like yeah, it was went to yeah, school it, later. Yeah, it After was. After I finished, yeah, you Yeah, I, I forgot what I went to school for. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. yeah, so that was some debt that had to be paid off too. Yeah, yeah. so, um, but I like what Kimmy was saying. She was like, Jalen is in a very unique position because he has surrounded himself around entrepreneurs. Yeah. So... He has a mindset that whatever it is that I need, these people are able to impart their wisdom in yeah, me. Yeah, or shake hands or or bump butts with the next person that may be able to help me. Right. And what she is saying is, don't take that as an opportunity to be lazy in your grind. Because right. if they can't provide what it is that you need, you need to seek elsewhere and able, you know, in order to do so. Because he's out there looking for an opportunity. That Marceau at this point can't give him. Mm -hmm. But what she is saying is though the buck doesn't stop at Marceau. Keep your grind going. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't wait for Marceau to pro to progress to a point where he can reach back and help you make your own way make and your make own your way. own path. Exactly. So don't, I, I really don't, like that. Yeah, don't wait on nobody else to make a way for you. Yeah. So let's go into uh Martel and his father. Now, we know that whole relationship is up and down. Father says a lot, promises a lot, delivers hardly any. Yeah. Well, there was an opportunity for him to meet up with Martel and the grandchildren at a kind of like a sporting event or kind of like jumpology. I can't remember what it was that yeah. it was. But you know what I really enjoy is the, watching the innocence of children. I always am and just in awe that children don't care. They don't care nah. about the story. They don't care about the last time I didn't see you. All they saw was their grandpa walk through that door. And they lit and up. And it was like, yeah. Grandpa. And yep. they embraced as if they just saw him last week. And I hope that Mar Martel's dad really gets it. Yeah. I, I'm not hopeful. I'm really not. And that's just because of my own life experiences. I hear a lot, believe hardly any. Mm-hmm. But I hope he gets it because those kids are so open to the love from their grandfather. But then in the same talking about, why do y'all keep showing us this man? I'm not trying to be funny. If he's not doing what it is that needs to be done, then let's handle this off camera. That's Because maybe the camera say. is making this relationship harder for him. No, what I was saying, I'm hoping that he's not stepping up because, because of the, the camera. camera. That's true. Yes, I'm like, so when the stoves... Yeah. When the show stops, is he going to stop? That's what I'm wondering. So only time will tell. We don't know. Well, I don't know. Mm -mm. So, yeah. But if, if it's hard for him, it do need to get off camera. If it's yeah, hard. it yeah. does. But then but, at the same token, is this a way of Martel trying to fix his father? Because if you really listen to what he said, 
He said, did you fix that situation we talked about where the dad works a lot? Yeah. And he was like, I'm working on it, but pretty much I need that bread. So is Martel keeping his son, um, his father on the show to collect a check to possibly free him up so that he could be what Martel needs him to be in the future? That's possible. You know, it could be a way of Martel trying to fix his father while trying to fix a relationship with him, thus his his children have a relationship with their grandfather. Exactly. It, it just could be that. Yeah. So, so we'll see where Martel get his hustle from. This episode was centered around a birthday party that Melody was having for her daughters. Mm -hmm. And her daughters are good friends with the Scotch children. I mean, that's how they grew up. And like we said, the innocence of children will make you bring things together, even when you don't want One, to. Want to. Exactly. So Melody had to call... Um, Letitia and was like, I have to invite you to this birthday party. Would you come? And there was a conversation that was had either last week, because I finally did catch up on last week's episode, or this week, where it was, I don't really want them in my presence. And in a normal family, if hmm. parents aren't getting along, then let's let the grandparents be the rational ones to bring the children together and to keep everything neutral. <laughs> huh. But we have Miss Wanda. Oh, yeah. She, yeah. Miss Wanda is not a neutral party. No. Nah, she stays on ready. And she stays on she ready stay for on no ready. reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like we saw in the episode where Tisha took her mom to get that nasty French roll, <laughs> I said the only thing she was missing was the pearls going down the French roll. Shout nah. out if y'all remember that. <laughs> or I remember that. Or spray paint a champagne glass right here. What? Oh, yeah. Y'all don't know about that. I said if she had spray painted a heart or some champagne or some glitter in that fridge roll, I would have said go ahead with your wet. <laughs> Yeah, we used, to get, we used to get them champagnes on um, freaking lined up in the back of our head. Y'all sure did. We and sure y'all would get the stack yeah. with the color right there. Yep. So Tisha was at the shop and she was trying to tell her mama, like, pretty much, I got this. Back yeah, down. Right. Like, you don't have to fight battles that don't need to be fought. You get offended about stuff that I've let go. And the mama was like, no. no. If I'm offended and I think people are taking sides... I'm going to put 20 on 10 for no motherfucking reason. I love Miss Wanda, but Miss Wanda is messy as hell. Yeah. And I would It's hate. almost like she, like, keeps stuff going. Yeah, I so would So she look for a reason to keep stuff for going. For her to be a part of my family. Because every event will be a Wanda event. Yeah, it would. <laughs> and I'd be like, what time is she supposed to come? Because I'm leaving five minutes before her arrival time. Because I yeah. can't. Yeah. So, but at the same time, sometimes it feels like, She's doing Tisha's dirty work. Like, Tisha would never say the things that Miss Wanda would say. So, sometimes it just does feel like that, even if it's not the truth. It does feel like it comes off as if that's your mouthpiece for the moment. And then you go back and you try to reconcile it all. So, Letitia is having a conversation where she's apologizing to um, Kimmy. It was like, you know, my mama comes off strong, blah, blah, blah. And I like how Kimmy handled it. Kimmy yeah, said, you know so what? Pretty much what she was saying, respectfully, no disrespect. I got your mama. Yeah, I can handle her, yeah. As much as she come at me, I'm going to come at her. her. Yep. And I want you to be fully aware that all of that respect your elders, don't say nothing back to her, that skit is off the table. Yeah. She come at me with guns blazing, I'm coming at yeah, her with a blood. Uzi. And we always talked about that. It's like older, the older generation wants us to be respectful. Mm -hmm. And I get that. And I think we should all respect you all as well. But there's a level that but, needs to be but, brought. But, but there is a respect of respects. That's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> what is Re it? Respect of respects. You can't expect mm. to get respect if you ain't giving it. No. I, and, and age don't matter. You, just because you're up in age don't mean that you can just walk out the door and slam it in my face and don't say sorry. Or I, or I speak to you, door. or I hold a door for you, and you walk through it like you entitled. Yeah. No. No. Thank you. Thank you. Because vice versa, if you did it for me, and I didn't do it, but like, these, so these, these, these disrespectful um, young boys today. Uh, yep, that's exactly what you said. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I don't know. Um, and like Kimmy said on the interview on, with Funky Dineva, she was like, at the end of the day, when Wanda says what she has to say, it's just like, we back to being sisters the next day, her and Letitia. It's never a thing. Yeah. Like, social media makes it a thing. 
being on the show and reliving it makes it a thing. But it really isn't a thing. They are a true family yeah, that functions with the dysfunction, which is <laughs> named Wanda. And all of us will have to admit at some point, even if it's not a constant, you have people in your life that the dysfunction becomes very functional. functional. You yeah. function around them. You learn them. how to deal with them. You learn how to deal with the madness. Yeah. You know how to step. You know how. Mm -hmm. You know what conversations not to bring up yep. so that the skit <laughs> won't get to popping off. Like, we got some family members that don't bring this up. Yeah, please because don't bring it up. It's about to be something. And yep. if you're new to the family and you bring it up, that's when you just see people just start rolling out like this. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and you be like, what's she going? Oh, you just brought up something that we ain't never going to finish hearing about. Right. Because I actually thought Miss Wanda was putting on just for the show at first when I first saw her. It's, but, it's mixed. But when, when I saw that video when they was at home, that's from the cell phone when they said it was gonna come at come at the house like that. <laughs> well, that was that weed talking, man. Had her relaxed, had that tongue relaxed, huh? All right, let's go ahead and talk about Destiny and LaBerric real quick. Um, Destiny and LaBerric, they scare me, and mm. I'm not trying to be funny. It seems like their relationship was over here in the West, over here in the East. They decided to get married, and they didn't talk about anything. Come, like coming together he was like i didn't know that she was moving in and because he they were having dinner with the hosts they was on yeah. this like double date thing and of course um destiny is pregnant and it just i i still I, I still don't know what's what's going on with their relationship <laughs> and i'm like I'm like you didn't know that your wife was going to move in she said she was moving in on a certain date and, and, and that moved De up to December. And he didn't help pay for her to move. And he didn't give her a Christmas gift because he was like, you move. And she's like, but you didn't give me any. And I'm like, are y'all functional roommates that hmm. happened to smash? And yeah. they have this baby on the way. And he's and they, upset because he's like, she done went to a witch doctor. We're talking about a midwife. Yeah. So everything that traditionally that he feels that should be happening with this um with this this um pregnancy isn't happening she's going to another city to have her on um, prenatal care she's having the midwife and he doesn't know the gender and he wants to know the gender of the baby and she's like no that's not what we gonna do i don't know uh -huh. like they just y'all put in the comments like how do y'all yeah. feel and i hope that they make it but it seems like she has a lot of disdain for him. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I, I yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they had this long distance relationship, but now they're married, and it's like, remember a few episodes ago, she said that um, she feels like she's living in his bachelor pad, like she doesn't even have a place for her clothes. And I'm like, dude, are you not even making room for your wife to feel comfortable? Even if you had to go and rent a space to take half of your clothes. And put them in storage so that hers can fit in the closet so she can start making this thing feel like her home too hmm. until y'all get to a place where y'all are expanding and getting something new. I don't know. Yeah. And hopefully that throughout the rest of these episodes, we'll find out the rest of their story because there is a piece that's missing. There is a piece that I feel like, like almost kind of like you said, I feel like their marriage was rushed. Yeah. For, yeah it was for rushed. It was rushed. And now... You know, we had to hurry up and go ahead and do this. Come on, let's hurry up and do this. And now we're going to come back and try to fix it and bring it back right. And most of the time... And they're it doing like this. Most of the time, it doesn't work. Uh -uh. Not not all the time it don't work, but sometimes it, it, it doesn't work. Sometimes it creates more problems. Because first you got the stress of getting through a wedding. And then when the wedding is over, with, you're supposed to be still in your honeymoon stage. But you're not in your honeymoon stage no more because you're trying to fix it. Yeah. And... You have a life growing. Yeah. So that so So yeah. that's another layer of, yeah. of stress. And so yeah. it seems like Destiny, um, she says she has a shop. I don't know if she does hair. No. I think she owns a beauty supply store. Oh. Okay. And she's saying that she has some suites that she needs built. And she's telling the host, like, you know, how would you feel if she wanted to invite Marcel and Tisha to something and how would you feel about it? And, you know, of course, the hoes being the shady bunch that they are was like, if nah. they're at your event, that's fine. You know, I, I don't have the right to go ahead and escort them out. You know, this your event, we'll play nice. 
But she was like, how would you feel about... She wasn't asking for permission, but pretty much she was. She was like, I'm she putting it She wanted to see her reaction if she did it. That yeah. I'm going to give Marso an opportunity to bid to get my business when I want to build up these suites in my, in my shop. Yeah, because she said she didn't know any other black builders other than... Um, and here go the whole some of some. I know I, I, some. I know some. Us. Uh, and I'm... Like, no. I'm going to say what I mean. I'm not a fan of people that want to take bread out of pe other people's mouths. No, I'm not. Because at that. first, it was like the Holtz was like, oh, we know other people as if they were going to find other people that they rub shoulders with and possibly give them the business of building the suites out as Anybody but Marceau. And I was like, at the end of the freaking day, that's still black business. business exactly. And I'm not going to take bread out of your mouth when you're, you're, you're being solid. Yeah. Like you're doing business. You're not shady. Let them bid and let the best one win. Win. Exactly. You know, don't try to go in with the shady stuff. And then they say, you know what? Depending on how much of a build out it is. We could qualify to go into commercial um, redevelopment or remodel rehab, however you want to um, categorize it. So pretty much they was like, don't get a business to the Scots. Go ahead and bring the business over to us. But now, I could I could justify that better because you're trying to get the business for yourself rather than say, oh, no, don't go with them. Go with Harry, Larry mm -hmm. and Joe over here. Right. So I ain't like that, but it is what it is. So. Let's talk about the, the, the Melody and Martell was supposed to be having this like sit down with a whole bunch of people for opportunities nah. that are coming down the pike. And it seems that Mel has also that she has already done some promo work and being an influencer for some other brands. Blah, 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 and they like what she's doing. So now there is a hmm. playwright that wants to include her in a play. So. And then there was something about a basketball team and a whole lot of stuff. It was a lot. And it seems like Mel was taking it all on. Boom. Yep. And I I'm can like, do that. What, I can what do time that. do you have do for that. all this? You you pregnant. No, she's not. I mean that she's not pregnant. She done had a baby. Yeah, she done had a baby. You trying to do a play, run all these business, do this speaking engagements. How the heck? Yeah. So then Martel comes in because Martel was late. Cause, so they started without him. And I thought that was a little bit <laughs> too. I was like, why did y'all come together? This was supposed to be something y'all was supposed to speak together. And Martel came in with the, oh no, we can't do all that. Nah, nah. We, You're we barely doing stuff. That. And this was the one time that I could agree with Martel. Martel yeah, was like, like no. you, every great opportunity isn't an opportunity for you, you to take. Exactly. Some things exactly. you just got to say, I don't have the capacity to do right now. Yeah. He was like, and for one, we're spending a whole lot of money. And we're not bringing a whole lot of money back in right now. That's what I was getting ready to say. I I, I don't want to say that they are broke nah. and they could be broke, but I got a feeling that their money is funny because the moves that they are making is like stuff just keep getting stacked on. And when Martel said that statement, was like every time we start something new, we got more money coming and we're going out. That's Your money is funny. So I'm like, even with this whole entire show, it's like, why would you put your life out here like this if it for in money. a bad light like this to get, you know, to get some bread in your pocket when you already got it? It it don't it don't it make really sense. Didn't make sense really. Nah, cause I know if if I if I've got it like that, I ain't fitting to put my whole life out there. Not not that side that I got a side chick that's pregnant and I'm married and I'm supposed to be successful. I wouldn't do that. Nah, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't put my business on the line and lose customers. Behind that, because I know me personally, I would not hire them. No, oh no, mm -hmm. no, because of what I what I saw, because I would have a feeling that that would cross over into the business. Yeah, and then I would see your character as mm -hmm. what it is on the show. Yeah, so that's gonna translate over into business for me. Like if things don't go your way, you are gonna get hot, heavy, yeah, and do, run yeah. out. Nah, I ain't, I ain't got that kind of time to give. Right, but that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. Yeah, everybody that has an opinion could be wrong. I, I don't know. Yeah. So we see that it looks like Mel is going to take the opportunity from the girl who said that she wanted her to be a part of her play and whatnot. And it's going to be an interesting play. It's, it's all I want to It's going to be a very <laughs> interesting play. I, I would actually sit there and watch that. I'd be like, yeah. what the hell? 
But she, but your she, preacher's wife. Who your husband is messing around with the minister of music. That sounds very churchy. Yeah. But it is, sounds very accurate. Very. <laughs> yes. And everybody knows. So Mel was like, it, say, I, it seems like I can have some parallels with this now. I, and then she was like, we're going to have yeah. to drop some few F-bombs because sometimes you just can't communicate how you really feel without them. Said, and I was like, yeah, she you, said, you, you got, got a to, point you there. You got to cleanse the chakras and yeah. get it off. Yeah, I said Sometimes only a MF can do what the MF can do. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, we'll yeah. see how that works out. Yeah, it sounds like it's gonna be a really, really good, good play. I mean, I, I just hope you're ready for the church folk to come after you, though. Oh, absolutely. Because they gonna be coming now. And she said that um, Huntsville is very traditional in their mm -hmm. in their religious beliefs and how they how they will accept religious plays and things like that. I said, oh, y'all about to do a Tyler Perry and just shake skit up. Yeah. They gonna, then they're going to come by and do a drive-by with their green Bibles like Ricky Smiley said. <laughs> Stop throwing them green Bibles at y'all. Shut that play off. And the play is of the devil. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> so, last thing we're going to talk about, we're going to get right back into the birthday party that we that we um, kind of aborted way back when. <laughs> birthday parties. It's time. Everybody is there having a good time. And of course, we would have it, though, that Marceau and Tisha would be late. And even Mel was like, oh, yeah, they going to be late. They was always late back in the day. And I said, you know what? That is a trend that I see of Marceau and Tisha. They always late. Always, always late. late. Yeah. <laughs> so they scrolling late. And Tisha looks good, y'all. Tisha's hair is everything. Like, Tisha be dressed on her tail off. That's it. Go ahead, Tisha. And they roll in, and it was like this dark cloud came. Mm -hmm. And the kids does what the kids do. Hey, hey, Miss Mel, hi. And, you know, all of them are hugging up on Melody. That's what kids do, the innocence right. of children. And they just go on about their business. They ain't got, they ain't got two Fs to give. <laughs> but the parents. Tisha is avoiding Mel at all costs. And I get that. I think the host should make sure that the guest feels Feel comfortable, comfortable. Exactly. Because you forget. The last interaction that you had, you put her out of your event. Exactly. Now you did invite her to this event, but y'all still shaking. Y'all ain't yeah. That don't erase the fact of what you did to me. Yeah. So if you want her to feel comfortable, just say, "Hey, glad you could bring the kids," mm -hmm. and that's all you gotta say. So then we have Marceau over there with the fellas, and they all bowling, doing whatever they do, and you see Sadarki over there. I said, Sadar, don't open your goddamn <laughs> mouth and say skit. Like, yeah. literally, I know that just you Just bold, bro. Just bold. I know you always try to fix something. Yeah. But, but Sadar, just sit over there like this and don't say skit. Just bold. <laughs> just drink your yak or whatever the hell else you had in that glass. But don't say nothing to these, to these grown folk. And Martel was like, so I pay for this party and you ain't even going to speak to me. First of all, stop. Stop don't telling people... What it is that you do when you it pay to, for your own kids' party. I That's what you're supposed that. to do, bruh. Because when it comes to the Scots, they have a little thing that they always do. I made them. I helped them yep. in business. Yeah. I paid. I gave them a car. Why you keep bringing up the monetary things that you feel that they are enjoying at the moment. That's your, like my husband said, that's your kids' birthday yeah. party. You who and else going pay for it? And that's why I have a hard time let Negroes do anything for me. Yeah. Because I, I ain't going to kiss your asparagus because you doing stuff for me, man. Mm -mm. Now, I'm going to respect and give you gratitude for what you did for me. I'm going to thank you. But on every turn... I got to kiss your A? I, I ain't know. doing that. I, I'm not built for that. You know, the Lord didn't make me that way. You remember what I did to my stepdaddy? Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell yeah. you what I did. Some, let me tell you. You gonna get a story time out of this because that just pissed me off. <laughs> when I graduated in 96, I had a hard time buying my classroom. And y'all don't know anything about me. I kind of raised myself in the house with my with, with people, but by my weird, but I took care of a whole lot of self stuff. Self-made, man. Very self-made. And I couldn't finish paying for my class rent. Going to school and working, couldn't finish. So I had just put it out in the air. I wish I had my class ring. When I woke up one morning, my stepfather had left like $350 on the kitchen table and told my mama to tell me, tell Annette to go ahead and get her class ring. Oh gosh, yes, thank you. Yeah. So I went and got my class ring and I went on about my life. Literally hmm. went on about my life. Didn't think nothing else about it. It was a gift. You gave it to me, right? 
about 10 to 15 years later, hmm. I come to find out that every time him and my mama would get into an argument, he would bring up the fact of you don't appreciate nothing I do. And I even gave your daughter $350 for her class ring and she wasn't even appreciative of it. Ho, ho. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? what? I don't know why my mama slipped and told me that day. It was the Lord. Yeah. Because you want to know what this, this chick did? Because you'll never hold stuff over my head. Nope. I went right around there. And it was after church. See, the Lord be working. I went right around to the ATM right after church <laughs> and put in my password and pulled my money out of the bank. And I drove around to my mom and my stepfather's house. And I knocked on the bedroom door and I said, can I see you for a minute? I said, you know that $350 that you gave me for my class ring? You know, I keep hearing that it keeps coming up in conversation. So I would like to give you this money back so that I don't ever have to hear about it again. <laughs> Bless you and have a good day. True story. Because I was there when she did it. Yeah. I don't ever want to hear that again. No, we're we not playing those kind of games. No. So every time the hopes do that, yeah, I get a personal dig. Like, I, I feel it. And I'm like... Mm -hmm. I want to tell Tisha and Marcel, whatever the buck it is that they did, can you write them a check? Yeah, write them a, a check. check. Yeah, I don't care how much it is. Yeah, give it to them. Be like, I know that's not the solution. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for helping us. Here's your money back. Here's, the, here's the car back. Here's the, whatever it was. Yeah, get that skit back. So y'all can <laughs> shut the buck up. Until that man died, I ain't never had to hear about that 350 nope, again. Nope, ain't no more. Now, did it hurt for me to pull that 350 out of my check? Oh, yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, man, that was a that was a good little pocketbook. Yeah, you won't expect me to put that out. You won't expect me to put that out that man. week, man. But the birthday party went off without a hitch, and then there was an opportunity for Letitia and Mel to get to talking. And this is where I felt like it was a an opportunity for grown folks to really hash it out. But I felt like there was a play up for the cameras on Mel's part. Like, there was a good conversation to be had. She told Tisha, my event wasn't an event to come and try to talk to me. And that was true. Mm -hmm. She said, Tisha, you could have given me a, you could have sent me a text and be like, bloop, bloop, bloop. We can talk at a different date. But to pop up at my event where I am already in this mode of, I need to, I need to nail my pitch. I need to market. I need to shake hands. I need to rub shoulders. This ain't the time for me to do conflict to resolution with you. Right. That was a good conversation to be had. But when Letitia started challenging some of the things that Mel was saying, then you get the rah, 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 and the da, 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 and then it cut off. So yeah. next week we're going to have to deal with that. And hopefully they don't ruin these kids' birthday party. Yeah, cause them the same. Yeah, because y'all going to mess up. They're going to say, we're not going to rent this place to no more black people because y'all don't know how to act. <laughs> Wherever y'all go... Y'all gonna have y'all high heels on, <laughs> your your black spike jackets, your liquor, and y'all not gonna messing up my act. good establishment. Yeah, <laughs> got dents in my flow from the stilettos y'all got on. <laughs> I don't, I don't have time, y'all. But I'm in right here. I told y'all, uh, not last week, but we're going here the week for that. That I don't think that Marso and Letitia and Martel and uh, Mel can be cordial. No, and I don't want them this, to at this and point. This, and coming together at this kid's party proves what I said. They couldn't even be cordial at a kid's party. I still don't think that Martell and um, Mel are going to get divorced. I think at the last minute they're going to pull back them divorce papers Go straight from the up. VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down, holla. Holla. It's all part of the plan.